Welcome back to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, and to the third episode of Free on Facebook, in which I take stuff that's free on Facebook or priced very cheaply and give it a second life. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I made a DIY automatic dust collection system from an old recycled shop vac. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Duct Tape Mechanic, for more DIY and tinkering videos. This is my mini outdoor workshop. I got all the equipment for it used because it's a great way to keep things out of the dump and not to mention you could save a lot of money this way. I think all these tools combined cost me about a hundred bucks. Anyways, as you can see, my table is covered with sawdust, mostly from my miter saw. Some of the dust is even caked up on the table. So when I saw this old shop vac on Facebook Marketplace, I began thinking about how I could use it for dust collection purposes. Initially, I was just going to hook up the vacuum to my miter saw and flip it manually when I, when I was going to use the saw. But then I thought how this could be quite tedious, especially if I was going to be making a lot of cuts. Plus, I would probably forget to turn it on half the time. So I thought, hey, let's automate this dang thing. You might be thinking, hey, it's, there's a simple solution out there of just adding a miter saw dust collection bag to the end of the miter saw. But uh, I bought this saw used and it didn't come with the bag. Plus, I'm also hoping that the vacuum will collect dust better than a bag would. And, and uh, most importantly, there's no fun in just clipping on a bag. The setup really only works if your miter saw is stationary and not portable. For me, this is no problem because this 20 year old miter saw is made from cast iron and weighs more than 50 pounds. To automate this project, there's not an extensive list of supplies, part supplies you need. The main thing you need is a 120 volt double pole double throw relay. Um, relays are an integral part of a lot of automation projects, so understanding how they work is really important. This particular one uses a 120 volt coil to switch its contacts. I got it from eBay for a couple bucks. It's made from a Chinese manufacturer called Omron. Model number is LYZN-J. You'll also need a single gain electrical box. I removed the nails from it a little bit later. You'll need an electrical box cover, some uh, electrical wire. This is from an old cord I got from somewhere. Uh, two hose clamps and a bicycle inner tube and I'll explain that one later. To get started I disassembled the switch housing and unscrewed the switch from the housing. I then used my multimeter to test which terminals give 120 volts when the switch is turned on. Then I crimped on ring connectors to my extension cord wires and connected the wires to the terminals that I had figured out earlier. Then I drilled a hole in the plastic handle and installed a wire clamp connector. Uh, I guess I forgot to mention that one in the parts, parts list. Anyways, this is just to ensure that the wire doesn't get pulled out. Uh, 
After that, I routed the wire I had just installed through the wire clamp, put together the plastic switch housing, and then tightened the clamp to make sure that the wire doesn't get pulled out. After that, I put the other end of the extension cord through the electrical box. The electrical box will keep our connections from getting dust on them and also will keep me from getting shocked. I then connected the other end of the coil. Uh, I then connected the other end to the coil of the relay. The polarity doesn't matter since this is an AC, AC circuit. Uh, maybe you're wondering why we're just not running this directly off of the miter saw switch. And that's because the switch is only rated at 20 amps, while the saw itself is drawing 15 amps and the vacuum is drawing 9 amps. Therefore, if we were to run it off the switch, we could potentially risk burning the switch or causing a fire. The coil of the relay only draws a few milliamps of current. Then I cut the cord that is connected to the shop vac into two. I threaded the cord that is still connected to the vacuum into the electrical box and connected it to the common terminals of the relay. I left the ground unconnected for now. Then I inserted the other end of the wire I had just cut into the electrical box and connected it to the normally open terminals of the relay. I then wire nutted the grounds together and the wiring was completed. I placed a cover over the electrical box and screwed it into place. I also used clamps to tidy up some of the wiring. Overall, I think the electrical work looks uh, decent. To connect the vacuum to the saw, I used a bicycle inner tube and two clamps. They do make adapters for Pacific saws, which you can use to connect to a shop vac, but I think this works fairly well and is really cheap. With the vacuum tube all hooked up to the saw, it's time to test it out. Since the vacuum motor has a higher RPM than the saw motor, it will turn off a couple seconds after the saw turns off, which is an indicator to us that all of our electrical connections are good and everything is working. The blade is a bit dull on the saw, which and it tends to get off, give off a lot of smoke, but due to the vacuum you can see that there's not actually that much smoke being given off, so that's also another indicator that everything's working well. I do plan on expanding this dust collection system in a future video by hooking it up to my scroll saw and using blast gates to automate it. But for now, the job is done. So make sure you smash the thumbs up sign if you enjoyed the project.